What's up everybody? In the last video, I showed you guys how to bind up your Emacs Tiny Hawk with your FR Sky Tyrannus QX7 radio and get them paired together. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up all the switches so we can actually control the drone and get flying. Now what you're gonna need for this is obviously your Emacs Tiny Hawk drone. You're gonna need your radio. You're gonna need a USB to USB micro cable. Now it's important that you get one that has data capabilities as well and isn't just power. You need that data to be able to transmit information back and forth from the flight controller of the drone and the beta flight software. And then you're also gonna need a computer that's set up with the beta flight software so we can actually program all these switches to do what we want them to do. So let's start off with the radio here. We can just power it on and we're gonna dive right into the menus. Once the radio is powered on, what we're gonna do is hit the menu button over on the left here. Scroll down and make sure that the mode that we want is selected. The tiny S is the one that I set up in the last video. So we got that selected. And then we're gonna hit page over until we get to page five. This is going to be the input setup. Now you can see that there's already four of those in there and those are the preset ones for the throttle. So you have your up and down, you have your aileron, which is your roll. So your side to side on the right stick. You have your elevator, which is your pitch forward and back, and then your rudder, which is your yaw or side to side panning. And those are all set up for these switches. Now we're gonna add in a few more switches here. So we're gonna go down all the way to the open one and hit the joystick. Under this, we're going to change the input name and this is going to be our arm setup. So we're gonna change this to arm, which is gonna allow us to arm and disarm the motors. So if we crash, we can turn it off. And when we're ready to fly, we can turn them on. So let's set this up with ARM. After you hit the joystick again, you can scroll down to the source. And we're gonna set this up to be the left joystick, the left switch over here. I like this one because it's only a two position switch. Once you move it, it will automatically set up for the source to be that switch. So we can hit the joystick again and then exit once and exit again to back out. And now you can see we have our arm switch set up. Next, we're gonna add in our modes. So for this one, we only have three slots here, so I'll just name this MOD for modes. And this is gonna change between our flight modes, which is going to be our horizon, our angle, and our rate or acro mode. Change that to mode, scroll all the way down to the source again. And this one is going to be on a three-stage switch, which is this top left one right here. So I move that around, you can see SA automatically sets it up for that switch. We'll click joystick and then exit twice to back out to the inputs. We'll do this for another one, and this is going to be for our beeper. So I'm just gonna do B, E, P. And then we'll go down to source. And for this one, I'm gonna set up the beeper on this top right switch. This is also gonna be a three-stage switch, and I'm gonna also set this one up for my flip over or turtle mode. Now I'm gonna hit exit, back out of this again, go back to the inputs, and we're gonna add one more, which is that flip over mode. So you can name this either flip or turtle or something, but again, you only have three letters. So we'll just do FLP for flip, and then we'll go down to our source, and we're gonna use that same exact switch. So SD, that setup, we'll hit the joystick, exit twice, and now we have those four inputs. So we have our arm, our modes, our beeper, and our flip setup. We're gonna hit page over one more time, and this is gonna bring us into the channel mixer. And this is where we're gonna add in our mixer for the channel, which you'll see on Betaflight. So let's go in here to channel five, automatically sets up the source for the next channel that we already have. So that's gonna be the arm one, and I'm just gonna name this A1 or auxiliary one, because that's what it's gonna be named in the Betaflight software. So we'll scroll all the way up to the one, click that, and then we can hit exit twice. We'll go down to the next one, already set up for mode, and this is going to be A2. Scroll up, one, two. Exit twice, so that's set up for A2. Channel seven, we're gonna set this up for a beeper or A3. A, and then one, two, three. Exit out of that, and then down to the last one, which is already set up for flip, and we're just gonna name this A, and then four. Exit out of that. If you need to edit any of these, you can go into it by holding down the joystick, clicking edit, and then you can go back in and adjust this. So I'm just gonna switch this back over to a2 because there was a space at the beginning there. A2, we'll put this back at nothing. All right, so now all of those are set up. We have our arm, which is A1, mode A2, beeper A3, and flip, which is A4. So now that we've got this all set up, we can exit out of that, and then we can start setting up the flight controller in Betaflight. So let's grab our drone, the USB micro cable, and the computer, and we can open up our Betaflight here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is grab our USB cable. We can plug that into the computer. And then we can take the other end and plug that right into the drone. 
Once you do that, you should start to see some lights on the drone, as well as it automatically connecting to the Betaflight software. If you're having issues with it connecting, you might have to flash the firmware, and if you do need to do that, check out a video, which I'll throw a link to right up here. Also make sure that you're using a micro USB that has data connection as well, otherwise it won't show up or connect to Betaflight. So once we're in Betaflight, the first thing that we're gonna do is a little bit of housekeeping. So we're gonna go over to the ports tab on the left here, and then under the UART1, the Serial RX, we're gonna make sure to turn that switch on. Then we can go hit save and reboot. It's just gonna reboot, get us back into it. Over on the left, you can click the configuration tab, make sure that DSHOT 600 is selected over here under the ESC and motor features. And if you scroll down, you also wanna make sure that the receiver is set up properly for the Emacs TinyHawk S, which is the one I'm setting up now. You want the SPI, RX support, and FRSCAD D. If you're using the Emacs TinyHawk, the first version, you're gonna switch this over to serial-based receiver uh, and then S bus for the receiver type. So that's good in here. We'll just hit save and reboot, make sure that's all good. The next thing that we're gonna do is go down to the receiver. This is actually where you can see if your radio is set up properly so we can do our throttle and you should be able to see all of these adjustments on the screen itself. So if we do these switches, the auxiliary one, auxiliary two, three, and four, which are both tied together. So that looks good here. Let's go down one more to the modes and this is where we're actually gonna set up these switches. So over on the left here, our arm, let's add a range to it. Let's use our switch up on the left. That's gonna automatically select that auxiliary switch. And then it's active when this little yellow line is underneath the main area here. So while it's down, it's not active. And while it's up, it's gonna be in that active mode. So that looks good. The next thing we're gonna do is set up that three toggle mode switch. So in here we can add range. And again, just use that toggle switch on the joystick. It'll automatically select it. So we'll want our angle to be the middle mode here. We can add a range. This is for horizon, so we'll have the horizon be at the other end. So as you can see, this little yellow line moving along that. And then when it's on neither of those, that's gonna be in rate or acro mode. All right, we're gonna keep going down here. We're gonna add one for our beeper, and that's gonna be our switch over on the left here. So if it be off when it's all the way back, we'll have the middle one be for the flip over and then we'll have the last spot be for the beeper. So we'll have that set up right there. And then if we go down to the last thing, and then we'll go to the flip over after crash, we'll add a range there, and we're gonna use that same toggle switch. So we'll just move that to activate that switch, and we want this to be in the middle mode. So we'll try to flip over first. If we can't flip over, we'll turn on the beeper. So we'll have that be right in the middle, that's set up, and then the rest of this stuff is things we don't need to worry about right now. So let's go over here, hit save, all right, so now we have all of our modes. Those are looking good. The last thing that we're gonna do is go into the configuration, scroll all the way down until you see this D-Shot Beacon Configurator. Make sure both RX Lost and RX Set are switched over. That means if you lose transmission with the drone and it crashes, it's gonna beep until it regains transmission, as well as while you have your auxiliary switch set, it's gonna beep while you have that on. All right, so this is looking good. Let's save and reboot. And now we can go up here to disconnect. So we can go and unplug the drone here, plug the battery in, that'll boot up. Make sure all of our switches on the radio are in the disengage and our throttle is all the way down. Now we should be able to test these and make sure that it works. So if we turn on the beeper by flipping that switch, that works. The next thing we should be able to do is arm the drone. So flipping up the arm button, as you can see the, the propellers spool up here. And we can give it a little bit of throttle and start taking off. I'm not gonna take off right now, but there you have it, we are ready to start flying. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to set it up and get it set with the goggles so you can actually start flying FPV. I hope this video helped you out and got you up and flying. If it did, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button and ask me any questions that you might have in the comments down below. Now I'm gonna go take this thing for a quick spin and I'll see you guys in the next one.